Here's the grave of Mr. Bronson. And there is something so fascinating about this grave. I'm gonna tell you about it right now. Hey, Freddy. I'm gonna take care of your dandruff problem for you. I know you're gonna dig this. Get, get, fu get funky with me. Everybody, welcome to West Windsor, Vermont. Car coming by. Haven't seen too many of those. Vermont is one of my favorite states. I haven't been to Vermont in over five years. Uh, not much has changed, which is good to know. It is so beautiful. If you haven't been to Vermont, try to get to Vermont, especially in the spring or summer. You probably heard about the fall colors. You might like that as well. I see a lot of that in Ontario, where I'm from. But I like the summer in Vermont. It's green, it's beautiful. And I can see why a huge, huge megastar like Charles Bronson would want to have a house here and would want to one day spend eternity here. This is Brownsville Cemetery behind me. And I think that might be Brownsville Cemetery on that side too. I'm not sure. There's another car. And there's another. Oh, it must be rush hour here because there's two or three cars coming this way. Charles Bronson, one of the biggest movie stars of all time, is buried here. We're going to visit his grave, talk about him, tell you something interesting about his grave, and then I'm going to try to find his house. He had a house here. I don't know. I talked to a local. They, he said, yeah, you can drive right up to it. Um, so I hope I can. He's a local. There may be signs up that you can't go down the road that it's on. I don't know. I'm going to find out. He seemed to think I could. And I really want to see his house. Him and his second wife, Jill Ireland, the beautiful, talented Jill Ireland. I'm going to tell you something interesting. All right, let's go. Let's try and find uh, Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. Just came up to the other side of the cemetery. It's, it's actually a fairly, fairly big cemetery. Look across the street. Look at the red barns. It's Vermont. And like I said, I think it's rush hour here in West Windsor, which is a very, very small little village. But more cars than I've seen in the past hour. This is very isolated too. Not, not so much isolated, but it's, it's hard to get to. There's, um, to me, a lot of small two-lane highways to get here. And uh, it's nestled in the, in the mountains, as you can see, in the hills. It's just absolutely gorgeous and I believe Charles Bronson is going to be at the north end of the cemetery so let's go in there so originally where I was is I was parked down where that white truck is coming right now that's where I turned in but I've come up here and you can see how big the cemetery is look at that and then down there as well but I'm assuming I believe Mr. Bronson is this way now I have a, I'm a fan of movies and music and TV and pop culture my channel is about pop culture uh, I haven't really spoken much about what am I, now I'm a fan of movies music TV I'm a fan of pop culture that's what my channel is all about uh, I do a lot of live chats I talk about different celebrities I don't think I've ever spoken about Charles Bronson maybe once or twice but I'm a huge fan like, very big fan of Charles Bronson. I love his movies, specifically the five Death Wish movies. I absolutely love each and every one of them. Now, when I was very little, I was into horror movies. My parents let me watch horror movies. 
My father one time said, you're going to watch a movie with me called House of Wax. And I said, what's that? He said, so it's Vincent Price. I probably said, who's that? And he says, 1950. I went, well, uh, no, because, you know, as a kid, you don't, you don't want to watch older movies. You want to watch movies for, in the now, from then. I wasn't really into the older movies. My father said, you're going to love it. I sat down with him. I'll never forget. And I watched House of Wax. And I loved it. I loved it. And the doctor, I think it was the Dr. Gerard, Gerard, played by Vincent Price, he had an assistant named Igor. And Igor freaked, freaked me out. He scared me. I remember being scared by Igor. Igor is working on a model of his head. He has a strange obsession, this mute of mine. Every head he models takes on the shape of his own face. Then I saw Death Wish at too young of an age. Probably I didn't comprehend what, de what Death Wish even was about when I saw it. And I said, that's Igor. Igor's Paul Versi. Igor's the guy. He talks. What? And I was obsessed. I was obsessed with the Death Wish movies. I've seen all of them about five or six times. So I really, re I love revenge movies. I, give me, you know, give me a movie where there's a guy that's wanting out to get revenge because something happened to his family or his friends or something or his dog, John Wick, where he's just going to go and he's going to take revenge on street gangs or like dirty cops, whatever. The mafia. One guy going after everybody. I love them. And Death Wish is the epitome of those types of movies. Death Wish started those movies. I even like the remake with Bruce Willis. It's good too. But there's nothing like those five Death Wish movies. It can be very, very nasty if I want to be. So can I. Let's visit Charles Bronson. So I'm a huge fan of Charles Bronson. So this is a long time coming. I'm finally, finally here. Did you know that Charles Bronson had 14 siblings? 14. From what I've gathered, too, they've all passed away as well. Which is so weird to think about the fact that you had 14 siblings. That's, that's a big family. And now they're all gone. And then his parents, of course, long gone. But that's two generations. And they're all gone. He was uh, born in Pennsylvania. Both of his parents were Lithuanian. 15. And I believe a lot of his family is buried in Pennsylvania. Is this him right here? Or he could be further back. I'm not sure. It could be where the, that bench is. I'm not sure what it looks like exactly. He started working in the mines after he uh, graduated high school. Then he served in World War II. After the war ended, he came back to the States and enrolled in acting school in Pasadena. One of his teachers was very impressed with him and recommended him to a director. And then he made his film debut. It was called You're in the Navy Now. I think that was 1951. Now I'm pretty sure his grave is going to be to the right of us. He was usually cast in action roles. These are movies like Run of the Arrow, Target Zero, Roger Corman, you know, low budget director, B movie, King Roger Corman. Uh, put him in a film called Machine Gun Kelly. Then he got his own TV series called Man with a Camera. The 1960s kind of was when he started getting really kind of known for being this tough guy, the tough guy persona. A lot of action, a few words. He was in The Magnificent Seven, The Great Escape, The Dirty Dozen. What was the uh, Sergio Leone one he was in? Spaghetti Western. What the heck was that one? What's the one he was in? Spaghetti, he was in it. Once Upon a Time in the West. Once Upon a Time in the West. Just came to me. Okay, Once Upon a Time in the West he was in. So he started a lot of European films for a while. But in the 70s he came back. He made a few films. Mechanic, Stone Killer, Mr. Majestic. And then, finally, in 1974, he made Death Wish. And I believe Death Wish was written with Henry Fonda in mind. Henry Fonda. Great actor. 
can you he turned it down apparently he was disgusted by the script is what I read can you imagine Henry Fonda playing that role uh, I can't but it was huge it was huge four sequels over the next 20 years for Death Wish made a bunch of movies in the 70s after Death Wish he was huge he was making a million dollars a movie then in the 80s he made 10 to Midnight Evil That Men Do Assassination he has Sean Penn directed a great film called The Indian Runner I don't know if you've heard of The Indian Runner it was a great movie it's like 90s early 90s and Charles Bronson's in it his final roles were in uh, there's a trilogy of TV movies called Family of Cops some of it was filmed in Toronto where I'm from but he died August 2003 he had Alzheimer's but he died of pneumonia at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. And I've been pointing at this grave, assuming that this is Mr. Bronson. And it is. Here he is. Wow. I'm going to read this to you. Charles Bronson. Sorry about the shadows. Let's see, I can't, I can't even tell the shadows. It's so bright. November 3rd, 1921 to August 3rd, 2003. He was 84, or almost 84. Cherished husband and father, do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not here, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond's glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the autumn's gentle rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush. Of quiet birds in circled flight, I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not here. I did not die. And you can see people come out here, lots of things left and beautiful flowers. I think now possibly between himself and Jill Ireland, I think they had seven kids. I could be wrong about seven kids. Um, blended marriage and I think one or two of his kids may still live in this area so they could be tending to the grave or well, this could be the town itself or it could be fans if we walk over here yeah you're gonna see lot look at the bullets people are leaving bullets here Wow painted rock And nobody's leaving these, uh, I, I call them crab apples. These crab apples are falling from this crab apple tree. And you can tell they're crab apples because if you listen closely, they're complaining. Very crabby. A little jump. That's one for Charles and one for his wife, Jill Ireland. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, Where's Jill? The beautiful Jill Ireland. The talented. She started in over a dozen films with him, I believe. This is leading lady in a lot of movies. I'm gonna remove these apples. Now, Jill Ireland passed away in 1990 of breast cancer. She had been struggling with breast cancer for over six years. And she died in Malibu. And I know she had written a few books. She was on the National Cancer Society board. She was, I think she was the chairwoman of the National Cancer, uh, cancer Society. But she had written a few books. And the audio books of those were, um, were produced by a company. I think it was Dove, Dove Audio or Dove Books. And Charles Bronson ended up marrying for a third time to a lady who... Uh, it helped Jill Ireland with those books. And I think, before you judge, I, not that you're going to, I don't know, maybe, you know, when I tell you what's, how sweet something is that's about this grave, let me say, I think his third wife understood that the love of his life was Jill Ireland because Jill Ireland was cremated and her ashes were put into a cane. And that cane is buried here with Charles Bronson. So I think that's very, very beautiful. And... Because obviously she would, it would be a decision between her and the kids, I would believe. 
And when you think about it, the ashes in the cane, as he was probably frail, as he was getting much older, and Alzheimer's, it struggled to get around, I imagine, if he was using a cane. And there she is, her ashes inside the cane, helping to support him still, helping to keep him upright, helping to steady him. He relied on that cane, probably, with his wife in that cane. And now she's here with him. So I think it's a beautiful thing they did to bear the cane with, with Charles Bronson. I can't believe I'm standing here. I honestly cannot believe it because I've been wanting to come here for so long. Since I started the channel. It's far up. Uh, it's north of Vermont, so kind of central Vermont. But it's north. Uh, it's like, you know, it's, it's far up from, like, say, Boston and that sort of thing. And um, Providence. So it's far up, but, and the way I came from Toronto was odd, going up through upstate New York to get here. It's a very convoluted path I took because I've been crisscrossing around filming videos. But it would be, if I just drove straight from Toronto, it'd be pretty easy to get here fast. But I haven't covered a lot of Vermont and New Hampshire on my channel yet. And here's Mr. Bronson, and I'm honored to be here. Those movies, those Death Wish movies, I mean, no disrespect to Mr. Bronson. They're, they get a little cheesy at times. They seem, and I just watched them all in the past probably six months. I watched them all again, right, right through, like not all at once, six in a row, five in a row, like 10 hours, like over the course of a week or so. And they get, they don't get better you know, but they're still fun. They're so, um, they're, they're so fun. They're, you know, they're, they're dramatic. There's action, but some of the stunts are a little cheesy. Storylines as well, but they're so good. Whatever you want, whatever you need. I don't need anything, but you, you need a bath. And they're of a time, you know, when they were made in the set, first one in 74, then the rest in the 80s and such. But yeah, those are some good movies. All right, let's get a good look here. Rest in peace, Mr. Bronson and Jill Ireland. And now let's go and see if we can find their farmhouse. Shouldn't be too far of a drive, I'm not sure, but let's see if we can find it and see it. Well, it's about a six, seven minute drive straight north. However, so right up this road and then off of another side road. But take a look. So glaring the sun, I can't even see, but I just drove up and I saw that yellow sign posted. No hunting, fishing, etc., etc., and absolutely no trespassing private property. Right there. So yeah, it's right up this street. So I was actually just looking at this stuff is right here side of the road. That's a painting and uh, some camping equipment. I was just looking at it, looking at the painting. And it's just it's take if you want it. Interesting. And the painting is kind of cool, but I don't want to cart it around in my car. It's already getting full. So straight ahead, then off of another road. And at the end of that road is Charles Bronson, Jill Ireland's Vermont house. Now, I cover celebrity homes all the time in Los Angeles. I've been to showing them in New York, Toronto, other cities. When they're, especially, especially California, when they're, you know, they're very well publicized, star maps and that sort of thing, and Beverly Hills, 
there's a million cars going through or vans, you know, tour buses, I should say, showing off the homes. This, for two reasons, I mean, they're obviously one of very private. I don't know who lives there. I don't know if his family still owns the house. It was a different name on the sign. It didn't say Bronson family. But also, because of that sign, I do not trespass uh, in the United States. I can't take that risk, and I would never trespass in the United States anyways. But I can't take that risk because I'm Canadian. I would love to see it. I'd love to show it to you up close, show you the house. But I can show you pictures of it because there's lots of pictures of it online. So here they are. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful farmhouse. And it's not putting the house on blast or anything by uh, showing, the, like I said, there's pictures online of the house. But unfortunately, I cannot go further. And yeah, another reason when it says private property, you know, it's, it is private, it's private property, and you don't know how they're defending their property. So, now you're going to die. I'm going to err on the side of caution. I would love to have seen it. Yeah. But finally got to visit Charles Bronson's grave in Jill Ireland and um, glad you come along with me. Rest in peace, Mr. Bronson. Rest in peace, the incredibly talented and heroic Jill Ireland who did so much for other people that uh, have cancer as well. And um, she was an incredible woman. I'm a little frustrated, but Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you all. Peace out. And up this road, the road that leads off of this road, it's called Bronson Road. It's pretty cool. Got a little street named after you. Bronson Road.